Good evening and welcome to this midweek Bible study brought to you by the Whitehall Church of Christ. I'm Kevin Love, the minister at the church. Our study today is going to be from the book of John as it has been for the last few weeks. We are in chapter 9. We're going to be looking at where the blind man is healed of his sight. This is a very important study, the Gospel of John, of course, dovetailing with Matthew, Mark, and Luke and giving us a detailed description from each one's account of the life of Jesus Christ. There's a passage I want to start with to begin our study, and that's in chapter 1 of John. John chapter 1, beginning in verse 6, there was a man. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all who believe through him he was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. I'm going to see another instance in Scripture as to where Jesus is considered light. Um, not just the light of men, but the light of the world, the light of all of humanity. <clears throat> and so we begin in John chapter 9. I'm going to read this passage to you and then um, discuss how I see some of these uh, instances playing out. As he, the text says, Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, yes, it is he. Others said, no, but it's like him. And yet he kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, how was it that your eyes were opened? And he answered, the man called Jesus made mud, anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received my sight. They said to him, well, where is he? And the man said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Verse 14, now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he'd recovered his sight, or he received his sight rather. And he said to them, he put mud in my eyes, I washed and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God for he does not keep the Sabbath. <laughs> Others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs. And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him since he has opened your eyes? And the man said, he's a prophet. Verse 18, the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and they asked him, is this your son who was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son. We know that he was born blind. But how he sees now, we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. Now his parents said those things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be the Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Well, whether a sinner, I do not know. One thing I know that I was blind and now I see. I love this man's response to these accusations given to him by the Pharisees. And they said to him, Well, what did he, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? 
He answered, he said, I've told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? They reviled him and said, you are his disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that when God spoke to Moses, um, and we know that that indeed happened, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. <laughs> and then the man answers, well, that is an amazing thing. This is one of my favorite stories in all of the Bible. Uh, it's about a man who has received his sight after being blind, and he is just so overwhelmed with thankfulness to who or whatever made this possible that he is trying to express himself to those around him who are just doing nothing but interrogating him over the fact that he can now see. And so the man says, you know, you're, you're the religious elite. You're the ones to go to. So the man answered, why, this is an amazing thing. Verse 30. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he has opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. The blind man is actually seeing better than what these Pharisees are. Notice how they answer. They answered him, you were born in utter sin and you are trying to teach us, the religious elite? They cast him out of the synagogue. Now when passage says they cast him out of the synagogue, that was a big deal for people back then because they couldn't even buy and sell in the market. It was as, it was as if they were excommunicated from the community of believers. And so uh, this was a big deal. This was a big deal for this man. But, I mean, look at it. He had actually been given his sight back. He'd received his sight. He'd been blind for 40 years. And instead of the Pharisees focusing on the fact that he had been blind from the time that he was born, the only thing that they can focus on is the fact that Jesus had done this on a Sabbath or that Jesus really wasn't who he claimed to be. That's why this text is so paramount, so important, because Jesus is indeed claiming to be the light. Verse 35. Jesus heard that they cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered, Well, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard him say these things and said, are we also blind? And it, I find it so interesting that they would even ask a question like that. Are we blind too? Why would they say that? Were they not convicted by their own sin? Jesus says to them, if you were blind, you would have no guilt. If you would get to the point where you would understand that you are nothing without the Son of Man, you don't get it. You don't understand it. If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say, we see, your guilt remains. Just last week in chapter 8, we saw an escalation toward Jesus of hostility, where uh, Jesus gets down to the point to where he says, you know, before Abraham was, I am, in verse 58 of chapter 8. And in essence, what he's doing, he's claiming deity. He's putting himself on the same um, plane as what God is. And so they, they wanted to kill him. And so this hostility is just going to continue to escalate as we go through this study of the Gospel of John. They want him dead. The primary reason they want Jesus dead is because it seems as if he is taking their followers. And he can't stand not having the ability... Uh, or they can't stand, rather, not having the ability of coercing these people to follow these Pharisees. Now, the disciples <clears throat> that were with Jesus actually mentioned something interesting at the beginning of the chapter, in that they say, they saw the blind man, and they said, who sinned, uh, him or his parents? And so, in essence, they're asking a question, you know, we, we obviously know that this man 
uh, is blind because of something somebody has done. And so morality is simplified in the eyes of the apostles in that they believe that those who do right will be rewarded and those who do wrong will be punished. Those of us who live in this fallen world understand that to be not the case and that good people have bad things happen to them and vice versa. Uh, we live in a world of cause and effect. We live in a world that has fallen. And because of that, because this is Satan, Satan's world, uh, we can't oversimplify the subject of morality and get away with it. Now, while it's true that we can do certain things that would cause us to have uh, things happen to us in this life, that's one thing. But that's not the case with this man. Notice what Jesus said. He said, neither he or his parents... This has been done so that uh, the works of God might be displayed in him. So in essence, Jesus is saying, you know, I'm going to put him on display. I'm going to let you know that I have control over creation. I have control over uh, bringing sight back to the blind. I have control over bringing hearing back to the deaf or speech back to the mute. Jesus is saying, I have the ability to do these things and I'm going to prove that to you. Now, this healing took place on the Sabbath, so they, many of them were willing to condemn him for doing it on the holy day. But then there were others who were saying, well, how can a sinner do such miraculous signs? How can Jesus do these things uh, if God is not with him? And so there was, there was a division among them. They come to him twice and they ask him, they interrogate him, uh, who gave you the ability to see? Tell us. They questioned him. How are your eyes open? And he said, the man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. They questioned him twice. They interrogate his parents. Her parents are terrified because they don't want to be cast out of the synagogue. So they say, you know, he is of age. He can answer for himself. They come back and they say, give glory to God. We know this man is a sinner, as they're making reference to Jesus in verse 24. The easiest way to discredit someone is to simply dismiss them on the basis of morality. So if I'm a good person, I have good things happening to me. If I'm a bad person, I'm going to have bad things happening to me, is the way the moralist looks at things. But morality will never save you or me. We are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are saved because we are sinners, because we are blind, and we need to have sight. We need to be able to see with spiritual eyes. We need to be healed of whatever it is that's holding us back or whatever it is that's making us less the person that God created us to be. And it's fascinating to me in this passage of Scripture as well that these people are in darkness and they're standing right beside the only source of light that they need to sustain. And in spite of all the evidence that contradicts their morality, they still reject Jesus as being who he said he was. The ones who cannot see the light are usually the ones who insist that everything hinges on morality. Guys, morals are good. Morals are important. Um, but if all of our basis, if all of our focus is on morality, we're going to miss the truth that is right before our eyes. We won't be able to see the forest for the trees, so to speak. So we can, we can become legalistic as these Pharisees are, and I know we give them a hard time, but in many instances, um, the question was actually asked in our Bible study today, if we were present in that particular instance how would we have responded to jesus what would our thought process have been about this man who had restored sight to a person who had been blind all of his life at the end of that chapter when jesus had made that statement when he said uh do you know who i am he said yes lord i believe he worshiped him and Jesus said, for judgment, I came into the world that those who do not see may see and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard that and said, 
are we also blind? Again, as I said earlier, thoughts of a guilty conscience uh, bringing them to ask that type of a question. Um, the Pharisees rejected Jesus because they couldn't see him for the true light that he is. Nor would they accept him because of that. Um, it's not that God, through Jesus, condoned sin. He never condoned sin. But at the same time, he extended his grace, which was, <clears throat> was far too complex for these legalists. There's a couple things that I want to make mention to you before we conclude today. <clears throat> the one is the response of this blind man. In verse 11, he calls Jesus the man named Jesus who made mud and anointed my eyes. And then in verse 17, as he's talking about this Jesus, he says he's a prophet. And so you can see this escalation of belief that's actually happening in this man who was born blind. And then in the latter part in verse 38, he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him to, as the Christ. And so you see this escalation of belief. You see this escalation of faith. And I love that about the blind man. But there's something else that I love about this man who was healed of his blindness. Um he responded well to those of whom had criticized him. That's fascinating to me. The man um, just told the facts of the case. You know, this, this man named Jesus anointed my eyes with mud and uh, told me to go wash and now I see. He just told them the facts. He didn't over-exaggerate. He didn't put on airs. He didn't do any of those things. He just told the facts. Uh, he refused to argue. He refused to get into an argument with them. In verse, uh, what is it, 26, 27, he said to him, what did he do to you that he opened your eyes? And he said, I told you. I told you and you wouldn't listen. It's, it's, it's as if this is, this is a moot point I, that I've, I've shared with you how I've been able to receive my sight now and still you yet don't believe. Um, this man is going to suffer negative consequences. He's going to be expelled. He's going to be kicked out of the synagogue. He's not going to be able to uh, buy and sell like he did in times past. He's going to be excommunicated, but he has his sight. And that's why Jesus said, you know, those of whom claim to see are truly blind. Those of whom are blind are guiltless because now they see. He said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And so although this man was excommunicated from the synagogue, he was also separated from a corrupt religious institution to where now he can seek out Jesus Christ as his Savior. Guys, thank you for joining us for this Bible study. <clears throat> Go with me in prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the blessing of life. Father, our hearts and our minds are with the people of Ukraine. <clears throat> Pray that you bless them in a special way, Father. Pray that you halt the advances of the Russians so that uh, they can receive peace and that this issue can be resolved, this conflict. Thank you for this study of uh, the Gospel of John and thank you for this picture that you've given to us this day of a man who was born blind and is now able to see only but by the grace of God, Father, that you made it possible through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit that you direct us with each and every day. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day and remember the one who gave it to you.